Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing y'all what we did to change out this old 100 amp fuse style panel. And we've upgraded to a 200 amp breaker panel. So these old panels are very outdated. This is what they used to use a long time ago. Uh, they're just screw in fuses. And you can see here that there's only 12 spaces here. So we're really limited on what we could do with the house. And this was a 100 amp service. So I wanted to get rid of this anyways and upgrade to a breaker style panel. And uh, we've got a lot more spaces here. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing y'all exactly how we took this box out and we've upgraded to a new service. So we've already started just a little bit in here in what used to be the little utility room. I think we're going to kind of turn this into a, maybe a pantry or a closet or something. But I've ripped the wall out here because just to give me a little bit easier access to the panel and the wires uh, to get my new service wire coming in. And we had to fix a bunch of spots where the washing machine used to sit. So we decided just to rip the sheetrock out of this whole room and then we'll recover it with something different. You can see the old fuse panel right here. We're going to get that changed out to a new uh, 200 amp breaker panel here. That's a Eaton BR series breaker panel. So the first thing we got to do is go outside, pull the meter, and then kill the power to the whole house. Get some lights set up in this room, and then we'll start dismantling all that to get the new, new panel put in. All right, so this is definitely not the best time to be doing this because it's raining just a little bit. But I've got some uh, electrical gloves here that are they're rated for, I don't know, 5,000 volts, tested up to 2,500 volts. And these are just protective leather gloves just so this rubber glove don't get a hole poked in it. This probably isn't extremely necessary, but it's just a safety precaution that I'm taking. And I just want to say that I'm not a licensed electrician or anything, but I did wire up my other house that we're currently living in, and I didn't have no problems with that. And I've done a good bit of residential wiring, so... So I've turned everything off in the house. So there shouldn't be much of a load coming through, if any. Um, so this is our line side coming in and our load side goes through the walls and that's what feeds the panel inside. So we wanna to try to pull the top out first. Uh, that's the line side, the power coming in from the utility pole. And then we'll try to pull it out just as quick as possible. It's as easy as that. And then uh, when we go to put it back in later, we'll do the exact opposite. We'll put the bottom in first and snap the top in real quick. We'll put this little cover back on. Now you don't want to touch these top lugs because they are still hot. They're still energized from uh, the utility service coming in. So we want to make sure we stay away from that at all possible. All right, so I know there's no power on the house, but we're just going to check this with a multimeter. Just to be extra sure we shouldn't have uh, any volts coming through. Yep, we got one leg to ground, zero. The other leg to ground, zero. And then to both legs. I can see what I'm doing. We got nothing. So we're good on no power, no loads on anything. So we should be good to just go ahead and start disassembling this, getting all the wires out. And I have no idea what goes where. So there's not really any point in trying to label anything yet. Um, once I get everything stubbed up into the new box, We'll, uh, we'll try to start labeling stuff then so I know 
you know, what breaker does what in this house. Okay, so we just got the old fuse panel pulled out and the new breaker panel here fits in between the 16 inch stud spacing. So we're gonna have to pull out this uh, little stud here and we're gonna pull out this little cross member here. But that's about where the bottom of this new panel needs to sit. And uh, I just don't wanna have to deal with trying to fish wires through the board and through the end of the panel. So we're gonna get both of these pulled out and then see if we can't get this new panel uh, fastened in the hole there. So, somewhere about right there is kind of where I want to put it. Alright, so what's going to have to happen now is usually you would just take your uh, service cable, come straight in from the bottom, come up and around, or like that one did, come through the top and come in. You can actually put these panels upside down if you want to. Um, I just prefer not to. So what we're going to have to do is there's a floor joist runs right there underneath that uh, bottom plate right there. And right where all those wires come through, there's a uh, triple girder underneath that floor joist. So we're actually going to have to come over right here in between uh, where this water line stubbed up and this stud bore us a hole for our new uh, SER service cable. And it's going to come up through here, pass through that, and we're going to come up, go through that stud, and come down through the top. That way, just to, it's going to keep our box a little bit cleaner. That way we don't have those service cables coming up through here. And plus it's gonna be a little bit difficult to get that uh, through that plate, through this stud, and then come over like that, make an S shape. It's gonna be a lot easier just to send it straight up and come over into the top. We have our roll of four alt SER cable right here. This is service interest cable. This is aluminum wire. And then we'll send it uh, up through the floor. We'll go underneath the house and send it up through the floor. That way we can get it all tied in to our panel here. And we'll just leave the rest of that roll rolled up underneath the house. That way we can send it right through there and it's gonna come out right in that corner somewhere underneath the house. All right, so we got a little bit more done here. 
we uh, got our SDR service cable put in up to the top. We got it routed to the floor and up and over. We got to get it cut and stubbed into the lugs. My home runs here coming into my box were not long enough to reach up to where they needed to be. So I've added some short pieces here just through the floor and I've connected them all in uh, just some junction boxes down there and got them wire nutted and taped and put a, a blank cover on them to secure those. So I've just made these longer that way I'll have plenty of room to put them wherever I need to up here. So we'll try to get this uh, cut and put in. I didn't film any of this cause it was extremely aggravating and uh, y'all probably would have made fun of me putting that in but we I eventually got it so My black and my red are my two hots. Those are my two lines coming in. And my white wire here is my neutral. And it will go over here to this lug. And this stuff is no joke. Alright everybody, so it's a day later here and the reason it's a day later is I had to go to the store and get some grounding lugs because I didn't realize this box didn't come with grounding lugs. So let me try to explain just a little bit what we got going on and what all we've done so far. I had some help come the other day. We rushed to get a lot done before dark that evening and uh, we actually have power to this panel now from outside. Okay, so... To explain what we've done just a little bit right here um like i said earlier we've got our two 120 legs coming in here to our terminals we've got our neutral wire coming into here to this terminal and we've actually sent our grounding wire over here to one of the grounding lugs that i had to go purchase uh, because this box didn't come with any i actually bought two there's one up here and i put the other one down here in this corner and there were several spots to mount this in this specific box all up through the side. So I decided to put one up high and one down low for my home runs that come in the bottom and then my home runs that come in the top just to keep a little bit neater box. So we do have power on the these. I have the breaker turned off. So all of this is uh, not live at the moment. There shouldn't be any power on any of this. All right, so what we're gonna work on right now is getting these uh, home runs landed that are already stuffed through the ceiling here. And then um, I've been turning on one breaker at a time and just writing them over here what, what they do because like I said earlier, I have no idea what any of these circuits control at the moment. So I'm having to figure that out as I go. So what we're gonna do right now, we've got power turned off. I'm going to knock out some of these knockouts in here and uh, get these wires stubbed in. And I may, I think I'm going to bring everything behind my service entrance cable and come into some of these knockouts right here because I want to put some conduit up this side so that anytime in the future that I want to uh, add a new circuit in this box. I'll have access once this wall is covered back up. Um, and I did add two down here. There's a one inch PVC conduit and then a three quarter right behind it. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. This house doesn't have AC. It does stay cool year round. But we may want to add some mini split units later on. So I just want to have good access to run whatever I want, might want to run in the future. I want to have good access back to my panel to be able to do that.
All right, so now that we got these other two new circuits wired in, um, there's just a few more things left to do. We've got to secure our ACR cable here, our entrance cable. We've got to secure it underneath the floor joists, get it screwed up to the floor joists. And so we've got a little bit more work to do in the panel outside. And then I'll show y'all exactly what all we've done out there when we get out there to that. So everything in here is pretty much good to go for now. I still have to pop two holes here, bore two holes through the top plate, and then run some more conduit. There's going to be a few more circuits to run later in the future when we get to them. But I'm not ready to do those yet. But at least we have power back on in the house and we're able to still see and work. Let's get out there to the main panel outside and I'll show y'all what all we did out there. So what we've done over here on the side of the house where our service comes in is we've got rid of all these old boxes that was here and all that mess. And we put in a new 200 amp meter base combo here. And I really like these because it gives me some uh, some spaces out here at the outside of the house for or like when I go to run the power to the pool, I can put my breakers out here instead of in the house. And uh, it just gives me a little bit more flexibility with some stuff that I can do outdoors instead of having to run everything from the panel inside. So I really like putting these on. So our service entrance cable here comes out from the bottom of the meter goes down through here through this LB and underneath the floor inside to the little utility room and I didn't film any of this I had my brother and my father come by to help me pull this cable and get it through and get this box mounted and stuff it was a little bit tricky to try to do it by myself so and you can see here that uh, my service provider has already come and buried the new wire for the new service to come in they just have to come in and hook it up uh, passed my electrical inspection with the county here so the only thing left to do really so you can see right down here the roll of wire that's sticking up from the ground they're going to move this pole down a little bit and they've got the new line buried around the septic tank it comes up right there at the house so there's not really a whole lot left to do on my side. We're just waiting on the service provider to come out here and finish up. We've still got power on the house, so it's not that big of a deal. So you definitely want to check with your service provider and your area to make sure that it's okay to access your meter panel. And uh, so what I've done here to keep power on the house, my service still comes in overhead for the moment and it comes into the original meter base here that has the meter in it and i took a piece of the service interest cable that was going to the attic that fed that old panel so i've just run in here to this meter and then that gives me power uh to these slots and then also gives power to the inside so when the service provider comes out to finish up they're in they'll they'll come in and put a piece of conduit here for, for the underground service and they'll come in and tie into this and they'll do away with all this other but i believe that's going to be all for this video i hope y'all uh enjoyed it maybe you learned something and you know if you're having to do this or looking to do this for yourself uh, maybe give you a little bit better idea of, of what it takes to upgrade your service so i hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all in the next one